Hi, my name's Andrew Gray. I'm one of the directors for Bioquisitive. Um, aside from that, um, we've also been looking after communities, helping um, source PPE from people that own 3D printers. We've also been working on COVID-19 tests here and exploring options that people might have in the future to see if they're positive for COVID-19. And we've done a lot of work around eDNA and looking after critically endangered species. Bioacquisitive is a community lab, and what community labs provide is a way for people to actually get their hands on science. So science is um, very tactile, and a lot of people don't know that because the way it's presented to us is always either through uh, channels like the TV or in podcasts, but there is in fact a very tactile nature that people miss. So we give people an option and the chance to come in and learn science hands-on in pretty much any field in the life sciences you can imagine. The best thing about a community science lab is that it does reduce fear of the unknown. So as people are coming here to do workshops or to learn about different technologies that are coming out in, in the world, so when CRISPR came out, um, you know, a lot of people here had concerns over CRISPR. So we started to run workshops where people could come in and actually learn what are its capabilities as well as its limitations. And once people have an understanding of how something works, what it can do, what it can't do, and they understand it, they start to, they, they lose a lot of that fear around that topic. So at a typical university, lab availability is really dependent. Um, often what you need to do is get on a waiting list. So if you're not actually coming up through that university system, um, as in like the academia system, so you're not, you know, spinning out of another lab that's already existing there, um, you'll have to get on a waiting list. And one of the things that turns people away from going to a university is this issue around uh, intellectual property. So around the world you might see quite a few different models when it comes to intellectual property, but when an institution says we want you know 46 percent, 30 percent of this idea before you even get to the lab to work on it, you know a lot of people are like why should I even bother innovating in science in the first place? We support science students by giving them a place to get hands-on experience. So um, if a student is looking for an internship or maybe a student wants to take their studies to the next level, they might come in and run a mini project here that would be similar to an honors project or a third year subject they might do at their local universities. And they can do this at any time. They can do this in their first year, second year, third year. They don't even have to be in science. So this is a way for people to get that science experience. And the same applies for um, members of the public. We've had yoga instructors here locksmiths, lawyers, all of them outside of this field of science, being able to come in and do a quick workshop on you know, genetic engineering, microbiology, um, understanding microbiome and your health, uh, eDNA, uh, so conservation biology, you name it. This is a, an amazing place for all those types of stakeholders to come in and get that experience. On top of that, on the commercial side, you know, we, we also rent this lab out to startups who need somewhere to do some minimum, uh, to develop their minimum, uh, their MVP. So their MVP is basically, you know, the thing that they want to take to market, but you need a lab to do that. You know, if it's a science startup, you know, they're probably going to need a lab bench somewhere. And unfortunately, it can be really expensive because there's not a lot of places around Australia that will actually do that at a decent rate. So we make that accessible for these startups during the day and at night when the community comes in, um, we're all learning together as far as uh, you know, getting that hands-on experience in science. I think the more people you have working together, innovating, and just learning together, the more ideas start to happen. People start cross-pollinating each other with their experiences, their careers, their knowledge, their expertise, and you get innovation just happening naturally as people collaborate.